It's my pleasure to introduce to you Ed Schultz. Thank you. Well, let me tell you how this works. I got a phone call about a month ago from one of my best friends, Leo Girard. He says, what are you doing March 1st? I said, well, I don't know. What's going on? He said, well, I need you to come to Pittsburgh for some coffee. <laughs> well, here I am. You got cream and sugar? <laughs> I'm honored to be here, Leo. You're a great friend. And all of you gentlemen have just been absolutely uh, so supportive of what we've tried to do uh, on the Ed Show, swimming in a, a vicious corporate world that's not always friendly to workers, as we all know. I'm proud to go on television and say that I support workers in every workplace in America, including my own. I'm proud to step forward and say that the middle class in this country is the backbone of our success, and that cuts right directly to collective bargaining and voices in the workplace. Now, when I, when I first came to MSNBC, I had been doing nationally syndicated talk radio for almost 10 years, and uh, when I first got there, they, you know, were going to give me a chance to do the 6 o'clock show. And uh, they said, well, what do, you want, what do you want your show to be? And I said, well, I, I want to talk about the middle class. You want to do what? <laughs> well, yeah, the middle class is under attack in America, and I want to talk about labor. Oh. All right, well, we'll give it a try. And that's really what it, how it started out. But my wife and I had moved from the middle of the country to Washington, D.C., because I wanted to see what all this change was all about. I wanted to be there. The kids were gone. We we're empty nesters. Now we got 12 grandkids, which is a different story. <laughs> when they come to the lake, they eat everything. But I wanted to see what this hope and change was all about, and I wanted to be there. And I had an opportunity to meet Phil Griffin, and the next thing I knew, I was getting a chance on, on MSNBC. And I'm very proud to have carried the banner for labor all of those years. And when they asked me what I wanted to talk about, I said, well, we got this hell of a fight coming up in health care. You know, President Obama wants to go health care, he wants to go jobs. And I was told by some of the producers, well, no, we're, we're cable, we, we like conflict. I said, stick around. And it's just snowballed to the fight just seems to be getting bigger every year. I know this did not involve the steel workers, but it involves all brothers and sisters. We saw history not long ago in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know, I relate a lot of things being a former athlete to us versus them and the culture of competition. It's always good to know your opponent. What don't we know about the Republicans when it comes to labor? Where, are we all on the same page now? And if I'm embarrassing some of you who have voted the wrong way in your lifetime, by the way, there might have been a screw up on the speakers list, I'm partisan towards workers. Have we got that done? We have now seen, for the first time, a United States Senator inject himself into a vote, legislatively threaten, lie to the media, have it picked up by another network, vilify workers, call other union brothers and sisters, the UAW, the problem, the enemy, and they get away with it. Not on the Ed Show. It ain't going to happen that way. No, no. And so they're, they're showing us their locker room plays right in front of us is what they're doing. They're writing the new book on what they're going to do to the next vote. And it's going to be with the steel workers, and it's going to be with the communication workers. And what this senator from Tennessee has done, he is paving a course and showing other Republicans, this is how you defeat the unions. You get advocacy money out of Washington. You get all these nut jobs who hate labor behind you. And then you just take it to them in the 11th hour, 
and it's what we've seen on Fox for years, fear. We as believers in America, we as believers in workers, we have nothing to fear, nothing. We can stand up, we can do what we have to do, and we will be successful. We actually have a political party. We have a group of people in this country that can't get enough time off. They have voted over 40 times to take something away from your neighbor. What is their moral compass? What do they say in the neighborhood? You don't deserve health care because you got sick? Because you got sick and you have a pre-existing condition, you should be, and call it what it is, discriminated against. It's 2014 and we're still fighting discrimination in the House of Representatives. But now, it's crossing all color lines. Now, it's us versus them in the work environment. So, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle the next election? Well... This thing right here is changing the world. I told a group the other night in Nevada. Now, I, I know there's, I'm getting some gray hair too. There's some people in here a little in, in the, up in the demo. You got to learn how to run this damn thing, all right? <laughs> you just have to learn how to run it. Hell, the kids are running it. That's where they run their life with this thing. <laughs> Use this to motivate your best friend. Use these tools today to make sure that they know we're together and that there is no giving up and nothing's lost until you give up. That was about the best description that Mr. Lewis gave about Republicans as I've ever heard from the academic side. I can give you the locker room vernacular if you want me to. I can't support candidates, I can't raise money, I can't speak out. The, the standards manual's about that thick at work. I'm restricted on some things, but I just want all of you to know, I really love Nina Turner. <laughs> My wife really loves Nina Turner. Americans never give up, and that's who we are. And we are the ones who are unselfish. We're the ones who care about our neighbor. We're the ones who are willing to take the risk to help our brothers and sisters out. That is our culture. But this culture of who we are just isn't in our borders. This labor fight is now global. And we're finding more and more friends around the globe to understand exactly what kind of a corporate fight we're up against. And so as they write the playbook to go after workers, we need to redouble the effort, reinvigorate our friends, stay focused, and don't ever give up. Union membership in this country is under attack by right-wing politicians. What has unfolded in Wisconsin is another template that's been put in front of us. What they've tried to do in Ohio, we were able to turn back. But they'll come back. They will come back. They will come back in the, in the form of a Chris Christie who decided to fire 6,000 teachers. They'll come back in the form of a Scott Walker who was going to put forward more legislation to hurt working men and women. They'll come back in the form of John Kasich, who's supposed to be the nice guy in Ohio, who just passed three and signed three very restrictive voting laws. Once again, the Republicans want to take away something from their neighbor. Take away early voting, take away the number of machines in minority-dominated neighborhoods, and also reduce the amount of days that you can do in early voting and also in same-day registration. That's how they want to run America. They're not going to be happy until they take everything away. They've attacked voices in the workplace. They want to make sure that the Employee Free Choice Act doesn't come to, pay, to fruition. That, I'm excited about 2016. 
I'm excited about that next conversation about the second round for health care, about the Employee Free Choice Act being on the table and not being negotiated away just because the economy is a little bit tough. Hell, the economy is always tough if you listen to the Republicans. Back in March of 2009, the stock market was in the toilet. Now it's scratching 16,000 plus. Oh, the economy is still not good for us. We still got to attack workers. Corporate profits are through the roof. They're attacking workers' voice in the workplace. They want to take away your health care. They've attacked your pension. When do we send the message to the next generation that it was the unions that built this country, the unions are the backbone of this country, and the unions will be the survival of this country? Every night when we open up the Ed Show, when, you, when, we, when we present, and you, you, when you do a show, you can't be at the same level all the time. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to have peaks and valleys of different stories and mix it in. You got to find that mix because we want people to watch. But on the opening block every night, I come out and I want to punch these son of a bitches right in the nose. <laughs> I was infuriated by Corker. It was so un-American. It was so against democracy. It was so heavy-handed. There's no story that I can remember in contemporary time that can be pointed to as a clear example as to how the Republicans hate labor. They hate labor. Do you understand that? They are never going to stand with you. Never. They never have. They never will. And they're a bunch of damn pretenders is what they are. So we're going to go to Ohio and we're going to tell the story about the steel industry in the coming weeks. We're going to go around the country again and do the kinds of stories. You know, uh, uh, the bridge thing in New Jersey, all right, that'll work itself out. <laughs> it, it, we, were, we were all talking around as producers and saying, well, Ed, you're not spending much time on the, on the bridge story in New Jersey. And I said, I was telling you who Christie was back in 2009, and you wouldn't listen to me. Now you got him every day. <laughs> Hell, if you'd have followed me back in 2009 when we were going after this guy, we might not have had this problem right now. Do it with a smile on your face. It's fun to win. We can win. We will win. And we will lead this country to greater things. Now, we've all got kids and grandkids, and I realize that the, uh, the definition of a good speech was seven, seven, and seven, so I've already used up all the devilish part talking about the Republicans. <laughs> so, but I'm going to go a little bit overtime on that one, if that's okay. Uh, when I say we're the unselfish generation, those who care about working men and women, working families, without discrimination, this is the lesson that we need to teach our kids. What is your legacy going to be? You know what I want my legacy to be? When they put the old man in the ground, if there's just a family standing around saying, you know, when stuff wasn't right, the old man had the guts to stand up and say something about it. That's where I believe we have to be. And to leave a legacy because I want my kids and grandkids to know that America's worth fighting for. And you know what? We're not jumping in B-17s bombing people. We may not have been on the front lines in the last war, and we may not be on the front lines of the next war. But our kids need to know that there is attack on workers, and it is a real attack on our soil, and it is something that must be met with a fever pitch, fire in the heart result, or we are not going to get there. God bless all of you. You can win. You will win. I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate you, all your support of all the progressive broadcasters that are out there. We know if you weren't there, we wouldn't be able to tell your story. And thank you for all your support. I appreciate it. God bless you, and let's keep rolling.